Today, I'm with Rochelle Melander. She is a productivity and writing coach, and we're going to talk about gamifying your writing life, which means making your writing projects more fun, and you can apply this to any other project. Rochelle, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, Rochelle, let me read your official bio for the audience, and then we'll get into this process of, of gamification. So, um, See, Rochelle Melander is a certified professional coach and the best-selling author of 12 books, including Level Up, Quest to Master Mindset, Overcome Procrastination, and Increase Productivity. Rochelle Melander helps coaches, entrepreneurs, and professionals overcome distractions and focus on the most important goals. As a writing coach, she supports her clients in finding their unique story and creating a book that changes lives. So, uh, Rochelle, this idea of gamification, I, I, I like it a lot, actually, because uh, I have this weird theory that our life is actually a video game, <laughs> um, and, and and actually, I, I do think that we are finding allies and and beating the monsters, which are our own inner, you know, yep. uh, and also outer sort of problems in the world. But um, but you're you're you have this wonderful. You've outlined this um, process of taking any project, you know, whether we're writing a book, whether we are creating an online course, whether we are uh, getting into a consistent rhythm of, of creating um, that, that we can make it more fun, we can make it more exciting, uh, and we can see more progress. So walk us through the, uh, the seven steps of gamification. Sure. So let me just start by, by defining it for our, our group um, or our listeners, because I think, you know, if you haven't heard of it yet, it might be confusing. So gamification just brings game elements to regular everyday experiences to make them more engaging. Um, and let me give you a quick example. So about 10 years ago, pre-pedometer um, watches, my husband and I got those cute little pedometers that click on your belt. And we immediately, we've been, we're always competitive with each other, but this became this huge game. Like who could get more steps in a day. And suddenly my husband was doing things he'd never done before. Like I'm gonna take the kids to the park or I'm gonna walk the books back to the library or I'm gonna walk to the grocery store to buy groceries. And you know, he would get 10,000 and then 15,000 and then 20,000 steps and I was struggling to keep up. And, and the, the benefit was by turning this whole exercise thing into a game, we both had more fun, were more engaged and got more exercise. So that's just a really basic, easy example of how people gamify their life. Um, and, and when you think about gamification, you think about the way you play games and all the things, all the qualities you bring to a game. When we play games, we're more optimistic, more creative, usually more persistent. Um, usually when we play games and it says, you failed. Our first thought is not, oh, I'm a loser. Our first thought is, I'm gonna beat this the next time. And so we push retry and go right back trying to beat that same level until we level up to the next, to the next um, plateau. And so I wrote my book, Level Up, um, to help people use quests, um, which is one of the pieces of gamification in figuring out how they can be more productive, especially as writers. Yeah. Um, and can you show can you show the book again just a little yeah. closer so that we can see and just go up a little closer here. Level up quests to master mindset, overcome procrastination and increase productivity. I uh, yeah, I, I, I love this uh, image you have in the book of kind of like you're, you're, you're taking. Can you show us one more time? It's like, yeah, it's like someone is. Yeah, it's like kind of go. It's almost like going above the typical too. Yeah. you know, it's kind of like yeah. being having a having a, a bigger vision. So thank you. Yeah. So I want to talk about, there are seven, basically seven elements to gamification. I talk about them as steps, but they don't really happen in sequential order. Um, so the first step or the first element is to challenge yourself, to define your epic win. And, and, and one of the things, or the thing I really love about this is I know that when we're anxious about a problem, like how to write a book or how to design a coaching program for our clients, it's much easier to get excited about solving the problem than it is to try to calm down and soothe ourselves. Um, and so often when we combat our anxiety, we're trying to calm down and that doesn't work. And that's why gamification helps because gamification puts us in this challenge mindset and helps us get strategic about how we're going 
to solve the problem. So the first step is to define an epic win, to think about your challenge. And with every client that I work with, that first step is defining what would an epic win look like for you? Would it be finishing a book by a certain date? Would it be creating a course with the work you've done over the last you know, 10 years? Or would it be um, just consistently creating and sharing content so that you weren't, you know, kind of like, oh, no, it's been six weeks since my last blog post. So now with the epic win, quests are the stepping stones you take to achieve your epic win. Yeah. So now, but before, like, before we go into yeah. that, I'm sorry. Um, you just said something about you know, setting this up that I thought was really interesting. You said when we're trying to create something, we can feel anxious. I think that's a, a normal yeah. response to doing something, creating. I mean, something you know, putting something, birthing something that isn't here before, you know, is isn't okay. So, so you're saying that a lot of people tend to try to soothe themselves. Yes. And the iro- the irony of that is, when you soothe yourself, you have less energy yes. to create. And what you're saying is you're essentially saying with gamification, we are transforming the anxiety energy into a challenge energy, right? right? So that, so that you can use the energy for good instead of just turning down the energy and then not feeling like doing it anymore. (laughs) Yeah. And I think, you know, the one thing that I, I've learned as someone who tends to be anxious is that anxiety and excitement feel identical. Um, And so if you can, instead of saying, I don't want to feel this, if you can say, I'm going to feel this, but I'm going to get excited about solving this problem. Yes. Um, And and then what, because, so because you divide your big epic challenge into quests, then they become smaller, more manageable steps that give you a strategic way to complete the epic win or to get to the epic win. Um, so the quests are the stepping stones that you take to achieve the win. And we're going to get to that later. Um, but first, I want to talk about some of the other elements, um, because it's really important if you're going to use gamification, that you use the game elements. Um, and you don't have to use all of them. But the more you use, the more fun it's going to be for you, and the more successful you're going to be. So the second thing is to, is, and this is, I think the most fun one, is get a secret identity. Um, And the reason, it sounds kind of kooky, but the reason we do this is because a secret identity helps us focus on our strengths. So if you think of yourself kind of like like a Wonder Woman or a Batman or um, Superman or, you know, one of the other superheroes that you like or one that you create um, that shares some of your strengths, that secret super identity can help you tap into whatever your strength is whether it's resilience or persistence or um, that's interesting details. And what if, what if you, I mean, cause a lot of us have a, a tagline or a professional title. Could that be an identity we, we try to embody? Like if, if I'm like authentic business coach or something like that, right. is that, does, does that yep. count or it needs to be something that's, that's secret, meaning nobody else knows about this? Well, I think it's great if it can be something that's a little tweak on that. So it's a little bit secret. Mm, um, yeah. And and it's great. Like I encourage people just to do use Google and search for superhero name generator. And then you'll come up with you'll come up with these generators that are already created that have lots of good adjectives that help you kind of come up with things. Um, so someone I know thought of, thought of themselves as the super content generator, the fastest drafter in town or a word nerd, um, making up fun stuff since 1999. Um, but your, your secret identity should really help you tap into your strengths. So whatever you are really good at, and I think the thing is, most of us are not aware of, or not, we're not, we don't celebrate what we're really good at. It's just second nature to us, you know? So I'm super good at drafting. First drafts are really easy for me. So I assume they're easy for everybody, but they're not. Mm. Um, and, and, so- and, and, and should the identity be connected to the, the project at hand? So if we weren't working on a writing project, let's say we're working on an exercise project. Yeah. Right, then, then we use an identity that's related to that? I think that's a great idea. I think, I think your identity needs to be related to your core strengths. So that let's say you're horrible at exercising, but you're great at content generation. 
then think about, well, what are the strengths I use for content generation that are going to help me in my exercise challenge? And how can I, you know, so one of my strengths is I'm super disciplined. And so that would be something in my secret identity I could employ for a daily exercise challenge. You know, so that, that makes sense. secret yes. identity is something that you can kind of keep around you so that when you're feeling discouraged, you're like, but I'm the super content generator. I can do this. Or, but I'm yeah. the Wonder Woman of content or the Wonder Woman of exercise. Yeah, great. Um, that sounds good. So the next thing is to identify allies. And I feel like, you know, um, there's a lot of research that talks about that when we connect with other people around support, um, our stress levels go down um, and we feel happier um, and we tend to rise to the to the level of the people around us. So if they're really good at doing what they do, we get better at doing what we do. Um, so it's good to have a list of people that are going to be your allies during your game. Um, maybe people who are doing the same things or maybe people who are doing their own challenges. And so you can kind of hold each other accountable. Right. And I also have neglected to mention that, Rochelle, you are a member of my Master Heart yes. uh, business mentoring program. So it's, it's wonderful that you are an ally to others in the program and others are an ally to you as well. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That is one of the most helpful things, I think, about a group program like that is that it's got these regular check-ins so that you have allies that you're with every week as opposed to having allies that you just connect with when you feel like it. Um, and then this, the fourth, the fourth element are villains. So we all have them. Um, and a villain is anything or anyone that prevents you from achieving your goals. So it could be your inner critic. It could be the fact that you're super distracted and love to play games online um, or love to be on Facebook or other social media. Or it could be that you have toxic family members or friends or colleagues who are consistently putting you down. Um, but you, it's important to kind of get a sense of who these villains are or what these villains are, and then thinking about how you're going to defeat them. Because that then, yeah. again, that puts that strategic um, mindset on. So a simple example would be, um, for many of us who work as entrepreneurs, one of our villains is social media. I mean, it helps us, but it also can be a huge time waster and it just like sucks the life out of content creation. Um, and so one of the things I've created is a plan where I do my writing before I even go online to check social media. Because once I get online, once I go into email, I'm lost for the day or I could be lost for the day. It's easy to get lost. Um, so the fifth element is power ups. And this is probably... I don't know if it's the most important element. It's one of the most important elements. If you've ever played a game, you know how exciting it is in a video game to get a power up. So it's like those little pellets that you get in Pac-Man. Um, the, the, the things you get along the way that help you fight the villains and win the game. Um, and you can get special ones, you can get timed ones. There are all sorts of cool ways that they can happen. Um, in real life, power ups are things that help you feel stronger, happier, more energized. Um, in the book, I list a number of things that I find to be energy renewing and that are actually, and I talk in the book about the research behind it, but research proves that exercise and walking in nature renews our energy. Actually, walking in nature is one of the few things that renews your ability to pay attention, which decreases during the day. Um, making art, taking a nap, um, listening to music, all of these things are ways to boost your energy um, because none of us can create or work through a whole day without these power-ups. Um, and so power-ups are just, I mean, I think absolutely essential for getting stuff done. I, I have a power-up that, that I do, which uh, some of you watching have, have, have heard about, which is my energy reboot. And it takes me literally like 20 seconds to do, sometimes yes. 30 seconds. And sometimes I just do one part of the energy reboot, which takes me five seconds to do. I mean, literally, you know, when I'm like just in the moment of writing something, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit, you know, anxious about something. It's like breathing. <laughs> it's, you know, yeah. breathing intentionally uh, can be this, one of the simplest power-ups, right? And it's really, it's, it's almost like a reset within the game. So when you're mm. playing a video game, 
you know, after each level, you kind of reset, you gain some more strength, some more power-ups. A power-up kind of resets you and gives you a little more oomph to move forward. Um, and then the sixth element is identifying rewards. And rewards are just like bigger power-ups. That's what you get when you're done with a quest. Um, and the last thing um, and it, is, it, is to design quests. So as I said earlier, you've got your epic win. Um, you don't get from start to your epic win without quests. Quests are the little steps that get you there. And so if your epic win is completing a draft of your business book by the end of May, you need to figure out how are the little ways you're going to get there between now and then. Because if you wrote complete business book in your to-do list, you would just be overwhelmed. Um, so quests have little, have little things. Um, elements that make them work. So they're measurable. Um, so they have some sort of measurable goal, like write 500 words a day, um, what, what exercise for 20 minutes, you know, eat something green for every meal. Um, those are all kind of small measurable quests. It's also great if you're doing a quest to kind of have a when, where, and what. So you kind of know when you're going to do something, where you're going to do it, and what. So it might be after breakfast, I will sit at my desk and write 500 words of my business book or write 500 words of this specific piece of my book. Um, it's good to have a power up. So when I get stuck, I'm going to, and you already have a plan. I'm going, when I get stuck, I'm going to sweep the floor. Or I'm going to do my breathing or take a walk around the block. Um, and then you have your rewards. So you know what you're going to get out of finishing it. And honestly, at the beginning of the process, when you start using quests, it's all about the reward. It's all about getting to the good stuff because sometimes that quest piece is so painful, especially if you're a person who's struggled around writing for a long time or struggled around exercise or eating your vegetables. You know, it's all about getting to that piece of chocolate at the end of the meal. Um, but as you go and play the quest over and over again, pretty soon the quest will bring its own rewards and you'll get that kind of feeling of, you know, aren't I awesome for completing this quest, you know, for doing my work, for doing my exercise. Um, yeah. And this is, this is powerful. I mean, on, on just different levels. I mean, one level is that um, like at this deeper level, when we, when we see life as a, as a video game, I mean, when we think about a video game, actually we're not trying to get to the end of the video game as fast as possible right it's a, at the irony is when we're playing a video game we are enjoying all the different scenes along the way and the different yeah. you know the elements and like oh isn't that cool oh wow oh isn't that isn't that scary but that's kind of cool because it's because we know it's just a game um it's like if we could also see our own projects as to like to notice and enjoy the all the various details along the way that's that's like, then we can enjoy the whole thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I, I, you know, so many of us have so many um, issues surrounding creative work um, and, or whatever it is. So I said, you know, I work, mostly work with people who are writers, but, or who are professionals who need to write as part of their job. And, and there's a lot of stress around this because it was part of what we did with school. And so I think, um, gamification helps us to make it more fun and it's a great way to overcome the stress of it um, with with a little bit of ease you know as opposed to with so much effort I mean we need both effort and ease but gamification makes it more fun and I had um, a colleague of mine from Master Heart took my gamification workshop and and you know, before that, he said he really struggled with writing. He really struggled to get there. He would create all sorts of reasons and excuses, creative excuses not to do it. Um, but using gamification, he said his writing and his writing process was completely changed by it. That now he has fun and, and he's able to show up and get stuff done with ease and not with the pain that he used to have. Wow. This is fantastic. So, um, Let's wrap up this conversation. And for those who are watching who would love to do more work with Rochelle, a um, couple of ways. One, of course, is get the book. So Rochelle, show us the book again. 
Uh, and this book is available anywhere, everywhere books are sold. <laughs> so wherever yeah. you buy a book, you can find it there. Yeah. And secondly, um, Rochelle, you do workshops, uh, online workshops. People can attend from anywhere in the world on topics like this. I, I will be sure to put a link. And by the way, for those who want the summary of the seven steps, again, there's, that's in the notes of the video. So be sure to look above or below the video, wherever you're watching this, to look for the notes. And then there's also going to be a link to Rochelle's workshops. And then Rochelle also does one-to-one -one work. So whether you are wanting coaching on, on your writing projects or on your productivity, um, she could do the one-on-one -on -one work with you in terms of the productivity or in terms of the actual writing. She's a pro writer. She's published by traditional publishers as well as self-published. So she's done both. And uh, she knows the publishing process, book publishing process very well. Uh, and editing process, all that stuff. So, Rochelle, anything that you want to say about how you work with clients? Um, <laughs> sorry, I just, I lost my train of thought. I, no, I work yeah. with clients individually. I work with them in groups. So I have some group coaching programs where we work together in helping you get from book idea to finished book. Um, and then I have some coaching groups which help you get more done and kind of get writing to be a regular part of your life. And so the consultation enables us to kind of talk and figure out what's the best fit for you and me in terms of how we would work together in a way that's going to benefit you and your goals. Great. Yeah. So that, that's really the next step. If you're interested in working with Rochelle, either in a group or one-to-one -one is get that complimentary consultation with her and kind of get to know her a bit and see what is the best fit. Thank you so much, Rochelle, for this conversation and for the work that you do. Thank you so much, George. This has been great. Thanks.